Isaiah 59, and I'm going to read the first 19 verses and try to bring you the thought God's placed upon our heart. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Notice verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood. He's talking to Israel here. And he said, Your fingers with iniquity and your lips have spoken lies and your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrices' eggs and weave the spider's webs. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Kindly of sounds like America. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doeth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we will walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night, and we are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. As for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backwards, and justice standeth afar off. But truth is fallen in the streets, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and as a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Brother James, you lead us in prayer if you don't mind. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for the day you've given us, Lord. We're so thankful for such a time as this, Lord. Oh, God, help us. Lord, we stand where no man can stand alone. We need your help. Your function, liberty, and power. Sure. And I ask all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, my dear brother. I want to preach to you this morning with this little thought in mind on the effects of sin. On the effects of sin. Now, I want to say this, say a few things about sin in the introduction. Amen. I want to say, first of all, that sin is the transgression of the law. Listen to this in 1 John chapter 3 and verse number 4. He said, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. 
And you know that he was manifested, talking about Jesus, to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever bindeth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. And the devil sent it from the beginning. For this the purpose, the Son, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Amen. Sin is the transgression of the law. I want to say this that no person ever sins by themselves. Amen. It always affects others. It affects others. The Bible said in Romans 14, 7, that no, no man liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Well, I've heard this down through the years, pastor and churches, Brother Doug, and I'm sure you've had it. Well, it's my life, and I'll live it the way I want to live it. Josh, it don't matter. Hey, it's not going to bother nobody else. It's my life. I want to say this. Your life, either for good or bad, will directly affect somebody in your life. Amen. 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 Well, a lot of times we're selfish in our life, and we feel like we want to live our life the way we want to live it. Hey, I've seen children be affected by the sins of their parents. Amen. I've seen people affected in church because of sin that has crept inside the church and is not dealt with. And I'll tell you, we just, we just had to deal with a little situation uh, there at our church. And a little girl, and she was willing, uh, amen, humbled herself, came before the church and asked the church to forgive her. And that's what we're supposed to do when somebody sins. Amen. Paul said in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual amen hey ye which are spiritual you forgive those people he said considering thyself lest thou also be tempted amen one man said this he said sin deforms us education informs us and Christ can transform us. Yeah. I'm glad, amen, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 is in the Bible. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Yeah. I'm glad God, when God saves us, thank God he transforms us, amen. Yeah. But when you get saved, you don't enjoy sin no more. Right. You don't enjoy being around sin. You don't like listening to sin. Right. Hey, I don't know where you were, friend, when God saved you, but I was a wicked person. I was. I was a wicked person and had a foul mouth. Amen. But I'm glad God can clean your mouth up, Brother Phil. I'm glad when God saved you, Brother Ray, thank God he can clean you up. He can transform your life. Amen. Right. Notice this. I see the love of the Father in 1 John 3, 1. He said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now over the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. 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 I mentioned this to the church last night. I want to say to you, beloved, that God is more concerned with our holiness, Lynn, than he is with our happiness. Yeah, right. Amen. Right. He wants us to be holy. He wants us, beloved, to, Brother Clint, stay away from sin. Well, I see a lot of people, and I'll tell you, friend, it gets on my nerves. You preach to people, hey, man, week in, Brother Bob, and week out. Hey, you preach to them and try to warn them against sin. You try to warn them, Brother Doug, what the Bible says about sin, and it's almost like it goes in one ear and out the other. Hey, they'll listen to you, but they're not hearing what you're preaching, amen. They want to live on the edge. They want to live uh, how, how close to sin they can live. Amen. I want to say this. The Bible says we have an adversary. 1 Peter 5, 8. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You know what I found out in my life, friend? 
I am no match for the devil within myself. Boy, you can be going along good in your Christian life. Things can be going well. And boy, God blessing and everything going good. More than Satan sets a trap for you or a snare, amen, Josh. And you'll find yourself being tripped up bad by the devil, amen. I told y'all this years ago, and I use it as an illustration. A lot of times I was doing good in my Christian life, and boy, cruising along, and thought I was doing good. I was praying, reading my Bible, preaching, trying to live right and do right. We had a lady one morning uh, in our church, Brother Doug, and she was having surgery. I went over to the hospital. I never will forget this. Got over about 7 o'clock in the morning. Hey, I ain't even had my coffee. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Son, I tell you what, I love coffee. Amen. I mean, I love it. And went down this morning, got me some early this morning. And I got over at the hospital, and I sat down and out there just a, a few minutes late. They'd already taken the lady back for surgery. I saw her the day before. And I sat down beside this fella, big old fella, and he uh, had overalls on, big old fella, giant of a fella. Now, I no more sat down in my chair. He started jumping on me. I mean, right in front of everybody. I mean, right, there was people there in the waiting room waiting on their loved ones, and he just, I didn't even know him from Adam. I didn't know who he was. Brother Jordan, he got on me and started getting on me, and, and I'll tell you, friend, before I got saved, I was a redneck. Somebody say amen. <laughs> we used to handle things differently, amen, before I got born again. Yeah. Amen or not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just old Pekin's redneck. Somebody say amen. And I thought to myself, I said, well, he'll be quiet here in a few minutes. Well, guess what? He didn't get quiet. He kept on. And, boy, you could feel everybody there in the waiting room, Brother Doug. You could feel everybody just looking at us. They started looking at us. Boy, I was sitting there, my blood pressure started getting up. Boy, I mean, I just had took a shower that morning. Sweat started running down my back, Brother Donald. Son, I could feel myself. I could feel my fist clenching. Amen. I tell you what was going to happen next. Wasn't going to be pleasant. Somebody say amen. amen. And boy, the Holy Ghost told me, he said, you need to get out of here. I took that about 15 minutes. Brother Rod, I got on the elevator, got on the cell phone, called my wife. She said the best thing you can do is come home, take a shower, and go to bed. Thank God for a good wife. Amen. Right, amen. You know what the devil would have to done that morning? He would have loved to run my testimony right, right. because of sin. Because of the flesh, amen, amen. And my pastor told me this years ago, Brother Tommy Hayes, he said we need to pray this prayer. God, cleanse me of sin, empty me of myself, and fill me with your spirit, amen. Amen. One man said this, I like this. He said if you partake of the, of the forbidden fruit, then you will become a bad apple. Amen. Well, the devil, a uh, friend, he wants to get you sidetracked. He wants to ruin your testimony. He wants to mess you up. Amen. That's what Satan wants to do. You can choose your sin, beloved, but you cannot choose your consequences. You can choose your sin. Amen. But you cannot choose what's going to follow. Amen. That's exactly right. Sin finds a willing servant inside a human body. That's exactly right. Now, I'm going to say this to you, friend. Uh, listen to this right here. The ultimate goal of the enemy is for the Christian to commit sin. It hurts the Heavenly Father, and it hurts your testimony. One man said this, your test will become your testimony. That morning at the hospital, Brother Jordan, if I'd have let loose and done what my flesh wanted to do, hey amen, it would have ruined my testimony. I probably wouldn't have been in the ministry. But that, I'd probably been voted out, been shamed, amen, hey, because of a temper, because I got angry, amen. One man said this, he said, anger is one letter away from danger. When you get angry, amen, you're going to do things that you regret, friend. You're going to say things you're going to regret. You're going to do things, amen, that's going to bring harm to your testimony. You're going to do things that's going to bring shame to your heavenly Father. Amen. The shame of sin is not worth the pain of sin. Amen. Think about Samson. 
over in the book of Judges. I mean, oh, Samson, hey, man, one of the strongest men in the Bible. And friend, he kept on, and Delilah kept on challenging him and challenging him. Boy, he'd lie to her, amen, about where his strength lied. Then finally, amen, she coerced him to tell him. And friend, they cut his hair off, amen, and a friend uh, made a mockery out of him. End up costing him his eyesight, amen. Sin will blind you, and sin will bind you, amen. Uh, they made a mockery of him, amen. And ultimately, it took his life, amen. Amen or not? The shame of sin is not worth the pain of sin. Now, I want to say this. Look back at Isaiah 59, 2. I want to say this to you, friend, that sin embarrasses God. Look at verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Sin embarrasses God. Hey, all of us that have children, amen. Uh, hey, friend, we want our children to do right. We want them, Brother Doug, to live right and to do right, Chief. We don't want them to bring shame upon the family name. Right. Amen. Right. That's the way our Heavenly Father is. He's high and holy, and He's lifted up, yeah. Brother Michael, and He don't want us, amen, to bring shame upon His name, amen. Right. Amen. Right. amen. Boy, a lot. The Bible said He went down to Sodom. And boy, He looked toward them well-watered plains of Jordan took his family down there in an ungodly a city, amen. And friend, Lot lost his testimony, sure. lost his testimony with his children, going to give two of his daughters over to those ungodly men. Right. Friend, ultimately, end up costing, amen, his wife's life. The Bible said Lot's wife looked back, and God turned her into a pillar of salt. Right. God turned her into what she should have begun in the first place. Yeah. Matthew 5, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And beloved, you and I need to make people thirsty for what we have. Amen. Sin embarrasses God and it discharges God's wrath. I want to say to you, something to you, friend. Sin will not go unchecked. God deals with sin. Amen. One man said this, God don't deal with symptoms. He deals with sin. Right, right. Amen? Yeah, yes, sir. He'll deal with sin in your life. We try to cover it up. We try to hide it. Amen? Right. But the Bible said in Hebrews that everything is open and naked to him right. with whom we have to do. Amen? Yeah. Amen or not? Yeah. Whoa, Lot. David, think about David. Boy, the sin that it caused in David's life with the sin of Bathsheba. Friend, when he looked over and saw her bathing on the rooftop, friend, that went in under her, amen, and committed adultery, then put her husband in the forefront of the battle. He tried to cover one sin up with another, committed adultery, amen, then committed murder on top of that, and God told him that the sword would never leave his house, amen. You cannot sin and win. Amen. Boy, God help us. Now, I want to say this to you, friend. You don't want to end up on the side of God's wrath. Hebrews 10, 31, it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Amen. Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Psalms chapter 7, verse number 11, God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Amen. Think about that. I tell you, friend, we're already facing God's judgment. Sure. We're facing God's judgment. Then ultimately, there's going to be a judgment that we're going to face that nobody will escape. Amen. Boy, God help us to try to live right. Sin is the transgression of the law. Let me say this. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 17. He said, All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. Not only sin is the transgression of the law, but I want to say, beloved, that all unrighteousness is sin. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All unrighteousness. Right. I mean, friend, we don't live right. We don't uh, honor God with our thoughts. 
And with our life, amen, unrighteousness brings shame to God. It brings shame to his name. It hurts your testimony, amen, and it embarrasses God, and it will cause God to turn his face away from you, amen. Then Romans 14, 23, I want to say this, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I call that sight sin, amen. Sight sin. We try to live by sight and not by faith. Brother Doug told that this morning, amen. Hey, friend, you've got an issue here that uh, every church in America would love to have. Amen. You need, a, you need more room. Well, how are we going to do that? That's where faith comes in. Right. You have to trust God. Yeah. You have to pray and bind together. Amen. And trust God. Hey, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Amen. Yeah. He's always made a way for his people, and he will continue to do that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sin is the transgression of the law. All unrighteousness is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let me say this, James 4, 17, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin, amen. I'm going to say to you, friend, when we know Jordan to do right and we don't do right and we do wrong, sin it is sin, Amen. One man said it's always right to do right and it's never right to do wrong, so just do right. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, he said if the stars fall out of their sockets, just do right, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Phil, you can do right and go to bed and have a clear conscience, amen. Right. 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 Amen or not? Right. Right. I don't know about you, but I like to sleep. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy sleeping. I go to bed at night and hey, we go home this evening and go to the motel this afternoon. Hey, I'll put on my jammers, take a nap this afternoon. Somebody say amen. You get older, these bodies require more sleep. You got to have more rest. Amen. That's just a fact of life. It's always right to do right. Boy, we better do right. Let me say this to you, friend, that sin will affect you. It will infect you. And sin will defeat you, amen. Who was it? John R. Rice said this, that sin will uh, take you farther than you want to go. It'll cost you more than you're willing to pay, amen. Hey, friend, you better run away from sin. It'll keep you longer than you're willing to stay. Ah, right, well, you say, man, I can handle that. Man, I can take that and I can handle that. Hey, hey friend, you can't handle it. I don't say this to you, friend. Before I got saved, I, I wasn't an alcoholic. I was a drunk. I mean, that's just the way it is. And I have to stay away from that stuff. I have to run from it. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians 5, Miss Lynn, to abstain from all appearance of evil. You have to get away from it and stay away from it. Amen. If you're not careful, hey, it'll drag you down and, friend, get you back out doing things you didn't think you'd never do again. One man said, if you play with fire, you'll get burnt. Hey, man. Boy, abstain from all appearance of evil. Let me just say this to you, friend, that the sin, the end of sin is dead. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The end of sin is death. Amen. That's why we have funerals. That's why, Clint, people have to die. Chief, they die, amen. Hey, because sin entered into this world. Right. Any way you look at it, I want to say this to you, friend, sin is ugly. Right. Amen. Yeah. It's ugly. That's right. Sin renders us so guilty before God. Right. We're guilty before God right. because of sin. The effects of sin, amen, number one, sin will separate you from God. He said in verse 2, 50, chapter 59, he said, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. David said in Psalm 66, verse 18, he said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Have you ever tried to pray, amen, and friend, you've got sin in your life? Have you ever tried to approach the throne of grace? Try to get a hold of God, amen. Maybe you got an ought against your brother. Maybe you're sideways with your pastor. <laughs> Somebody say amen. 
Maybe you're mad at somebody in your family. Hey, something hadn't went right. Clint, you get down to pray, amen. And boy, the Holy Ghost, Brother Grisham, he'll remind you. He said you need to get that thing right. Over there in the book of Matthew, amen, he said when you come to the altar to bring your gift, he said if you got an alt against your brother, he said you go to your brother and make that thing right. right. Amen. Yeah. amen. Somebody say, well, I'm going to wait for them to come first. That ain't what the Bible said. Right. No. Amen. Right. Brother Phil, the Bible said to go to them first. But Doug, if we got an alt against our brothers, hey amen, we need to know and go to them. Hey, they may not ever forgive you, but I'm going to tell you what, we're commanded in the Word of God, Miss Sonny, to forgive them. Right. Amen. You know why we're to forgive people? Because God has forgiven us. Yeah. Right. Matthew chapter 6, he said, If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of your trespasses. Right. Think about that the next time you get down to pray, friend. Yeah, good. Amen. You get down to pray and you've got an alt against somebody. Hey, man, something in your heart ain't right with somebody else. Hey, the best thing to do is go to them and make it right. Yeah. Just get right. Hey, man, it separates. Hey, it separated man and his creator in the Garden of Eden. Right. God put them in a perfect place. And you know the story in Genesis 3. Brother Doug had the enemy uh, crept in and he uh, went up to Eve, amen, and tempted the woman because she was a weaker vessel. Man fell into sin. God had to put a cherub, amen, the east of Eden with a flaming sword, amen. Hey, I want to say this to you, friend, that God hates sin, but he loves a sinner, amen. Romans 5, 8, but God commandeth his love or giveth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. I want to say this to you, friend. Uh, sin, if you're not careful, it'll separate you and your companion. Let me just give you this. Look at this right quick in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Look at verse number 4. He, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that uh, he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder they say unto him why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. I want to say to you, friend, that sin can separate a man and his companion. Sure. Sure. Amen. Sure. God gives you a wife. Thank God for a good wife. Somebody say amen. The Bible said, Christ said this, that a man ought to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Now, I want to just say this. Now, I'm about through here this morning. I want to say this to you, friend. Sometimes all of us are hard to love. Does anybody in here beside me have a bad day sometime? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sometimes all of us get up on the wrong side of the bed. Amen or not? Sure. Yeah. Sometimes, amen, it's hard to love. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But we've got to be like the Lord. We've got to be long-suffering. Yeah. We've got to forgive, amen, and be able to put that stuff behind us. Don't go around uh, harboring hatred and bitterness in your heart, amen, that separates you and, and you and your God. Not only does it separate man and his creator, sin separates man and his companion, but I want to say this, I mentioned a lot, it separates man and his children. God had four daughters, had had two that were already married and two that were not married. He wanted to give those two over to those wicked sodomites. Amen. Hey, you know what he did? He it separated him between him and his children. Amen. How many broken homes do you know this morning? How many homes do you know, amen, where sin has crept in home and it causes conflict, amen, uh, with families? 
I know families today, Brother Doug, that don't even get together no more for Thanksgiving or Christmas. You know why? Because they have hard feelings, amen, Thad. Sin has entered in them homes, and it's divided homes, amen. Sure. Yeah. amen. I like what the Bible said over in Psalms 133, verse number 1. He said, how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Boy, God wants us to dwell together in unity, amen. Then I want to say this, amen, in closing. I want to say, friend, the effects of sin. Sin separates man and his creator. It separates man and his companion. It separates man and his children. But look at Hebrews chapter number 10. I want to say this. If you're not careful, sin will separate you, amen, from your church. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse 22. He said, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Look at verse 26. He said, For if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Willful sin. When we neglect our obligation to the house of God. Amen. Now listen, I know people get sick and I know things happen. My wife got sick last night. I know people have surgeries and stuff like that. But I also know that people make excuses. Yeah, sure. Amen. Yeah, sure. Amen. Yeah, sure. I'm to tell you what, friend. What happens if you let sin enter your, enter your life, you know what it caused you? It will cause separation between you and your church. Right. That's right. <clears throat> now I want to say something to you, friend. There's nothing like your church family. Yeah. Thank God the church is a family. There's nothing like being at the house of God. Boy, coming in, I love coming into church. Hey, I love hearing instruments played, amen. I love watching people, seeing people sing in the choir. Hey, see people have a time of fellowship, go around shaking each other's hands. Hey, people uh, praying for one another, amen. There's nothing like love inside the house of God. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.